Coming in just high or just shy of the 4,000 pound mark, this is a Winnebago 2108 DS Micro Mini here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. These are uh, a rarer find in the business, not just because of Winnebago being very kind of picky about the dealers they're willing to do business with. It's kind of a feather in our cap here at Halo RV that, you know, we have these guys among our lineup. But the fact that it's a seven foot wide, easy towing, narrow body camper with tandem axles. That alone is hard enough to find, but now it also has a standard off-road package to give it superior ground clearance, which is going to be very beneficial for folks who maybe go off-grid a little bit and felt that the previous generation sewer uh, outlets were a little too close to the ground. Well, now you don't have that problem anymore. And an updated facelifted interior along with that beautiful best-in-class fiberglass skin completes a package. To... These, I tell you, these guys are hard to beat. They're not the cheapest, that's certainly not the case. You will not find Winnebago will never be the cheapest brand of camper out there. But in terms of service records, I cannot produce another trailer that has better service records than these guys. During the course of this video, we're going to discuss several ways in which this little micro mini is traveling friendly. But one of the reasons it's very traveling friendly is that it's basically fully accessible with the slide closed. You see that you can get through to the kitchen. You can obviously get back to the bathroom. But here's another really cool thing. If I spin us around, oh, there's my gloves. I was trying to find my gloves and they were sitting right behind me. I'm an idiot. Anyway, a lot of Murphy bed trailers have to, to I, I guess for lack of a better phrase, put the bed away when uh, the RV's in transit. Winnebago's Murphy bed works a little bit differently. It locks in the down position and it is designed to travel in the down position. Uh, the gas strut, uh, easy lift system that you'll see demonstrated in a few minutes here, it's so strong that if you left it in the up position, the bouncing could actually rattle the mounts apart. So uh, one of the cool things about that is that means that this is always travel accessible, meaning you can walk around the bed, you can get into the bed, out of the bed, whatever. And if you need to stop and put the bed away, you can. But other than the TV and two little cabinets around it, you don't lose out on anything in these going down the road. I also think that Winnebago's Murphy bed system is pretty much one of the best ones on the market. I think Winnebago and Rockwood have about the best mechanism involved in their Murphy beds out there. Now, they were the first ones to crack the case of like on a bullet nose shaped trailer, giving you a nice one piece folding Murphy bed. And you can't see a lot of depth perception here. So I like to put myself in front of the camera for a moment. You can see how big I am. And there's the fact that I can lean back that far before my head even touches this thing. There's all kinds of headroom behind me. So it's nice, it's big, it's spacious. I love the fact that we have these big side stands. So like every time I sit down for a meal, I either forget my fork or a napkin or etc. I forgot my plate once, which is impressive. But it gives me a spot to actually set something down or just have a drink beside me while I'm watching TV from the day. And the TV's in the position of you viewers at home right now. So it's kind of like that movie, The Ring. I don't know if you ever realized, but every camera position in that movie is actually the view from a television screen. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know how I got on that tangent, regardless. But the fact is, this thing is about as easy as pie to operate. Now, another key difference on here is if I lift this halfway up, you can see that there's no storage access below this sofa. That's another major difference between Winnebago's Murphy bed system and most others, is they're completely separate inside versus outside storage. Now, what I like here is you see virtually nothing mechanical. It's clean, it's just superior execution all the way through. And going uh, when you drop this thing, it latches in place and it is not going anywhere. So if you sit on the front of this, it's not going to dump you up there. It's what I call getting lawn chaired. You know, you're not going to get lawn chaired. Now, you notice how it also has these handy little nylon buckle straps. That's so the bedding stays in place. You don't have to make the bed every morning, every night with a Winnebago Murphy bed. It's just one more issue of ease and convenience. Now, I've talked to a lot of people who are like, I don't care about this. I don't care that it's a Murphy bed. I don't care about that thing. So don't use it that way. There's nothing that says you can't just leave the bed down. You can't ignore the fact that this happens to have a Murphy bed mechanism. But what this lets you do is, let's say it's a, like a rainy day and you have some friends over or something like that, or you just need a little bit more space in here. Well, all you have to do is uh, flip it and forget it. Uh, flip it. And forget it.
you can see how good their retraction mechanism is on that. You pull this up, pull the back in, drop it down, and you can put the bed away so that if you need a little bit more space or on a rainy day or if you have the grandkiddos or some friends or guests over and you need that extra visiting space, you got it. It's kind of like an escalator. This Murphy bed model, at worst, is always just a front walk-around bed, but at best gives you the ability to gain the benefits of a super slide travel trailer without the weight and the cost of a super slide, and that's the key factor of a Murphy bed right there. From there, I want to draw our attention over to the campsite of the RV. And although there's not like a one giant obvious big window, frankly, you've got about the maximum amount of window coverage this floor plan can possibly allow for. So whether you're at the kitchen, at the dinette, in bed, or at the sofa, you can see what's going on in your campsite. Both the kitchen and sofa slash bedside windows open for airflow. Now, the window in the main entry door does not open for airflow, but it is a true window. It's not just a frosty glass kind of job, and obviously it does have its own privacy shade, so you're not going to lose anything there. Now, again, the benefit of this is that you're getting the, the seating and the space of a super slide without the length, weight, and cost of a super slide. Both of those extra large stands during the day or at night function for things like phone chargers. You could throw a heated blanket, fans, I don't know, tablet, laptop chargers. You get it. The sky's the limit. Whatever you can plug into a household plug is going to work there. And on the campsite, there's also USB outlets. Um, the windows on either side of the better sofa you can see are extremely oversized. And that's just a Winnebago signature calling card. They put the biggest windows they can around a, uh, a bed. So you always get good light and airflow whenever you want. Plus, if you take a knee and look up, you can see there's yet another vent above the bed for even more airflow. While we are looking up here, I want to mention the fact that you can outfit these, and it is typically what we do, with a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner straight from the factory. So that... On this little box, especially in conjunction with the enhanced weather package that we will discuss outside, means that, frankly, I don't care what sort of hot state you take this little Winnebago to, it's going to keep up, and it's going to do just fine for you. Now, a really, really clutch feature on here is that we are completely carpetless, inclusive of the slide-out. And I can't tell you just how many trailers I've seen that are carpetless main decks, but still have carpet in a dinette slide. And if there's one place you probably don't want carpet, it's probably in the dinette where most of the food and drinks are happening. So this is extremely day-to-day, -day, easy cleaning friendly. It's kid friendly. It's pet friendly. There's no vents in the floor. There's a lot of really, really good features going on there. And I love how they actually took the time and the extra money and labor to fully trim that dinette floor out here in that slide out. Now yet another oversized window providing plenty of airflow. Over here in the entertainment, you can see how the TV is pivoted out. That is an angle adjustable TV, so you can see it easier from the dinette. Uh, Bluetooth, DVD stereo, pretty normal stuff right there. But what's kind of handy is how guest friendly this little bugger is. Because if need be, you can drop the night privacy shades through this camper and you can fold that dinette down so you've got a decent guest sleeping space here, or frankly, you've got a big flat cargo space that you can transport some stuff on in transit. Although you don't want to go crazy bananas on that, but frankly, any general camp equipment you have will ride just fine in that slide out. Now, another note on that. I should have mentioned this when I was in front of the camera because I could have opened it and closed it. But in front of the bed and between the dinette, you do have a curtain here to be able to partition off the front Murphy bed, your primary sleeper, as well as this dinette, so that everybody gets a, a decent amount of privacy. And the smaller an RV, the more critical utilizing intelligently every little nook and cranny and ounce of space becomes. And you will see in these Winnebago's, they don't let an ounce of space go to waste. They are including uh, dinette end doors to get to that storage below the dinette now. But if you do happen to lift up the cushions, one of the things you're going to find is superior materials. And that's a recurring trend through these Winnebago's. You are sitting on 5 8 plywood, which is overkill for this little thing. But they don't use um, like scrap material anywhere on these. Everything Winnebago builds is with a primary material. And another area that you can kind of hear that 
is in the slide fascia because you can hear the difference in the quality of materials if you just tap on it a little bit. Now, over here in the kitchen area, something I want to point out is that all of our cabinetry is all pocket screwed, which is not necessarily unheard of. But again, as you start getting into smaller RVs, less expensive construction methods like stapling particle board cabinets together becomes more and more common. Understand, there's nothing necessarily wrong with staple cabinet construction. It's okay. But I guarantee you, 10 times out of 10, if you ask a person, would you rather have sawdust cabinets that are stapled together, <laughs> jokingly I refer to as beaver puke, or uh, actual lumber core cabinets that are pocket screwed together with hardwood doors, the answer is option B, 10 times out of 10. Um, the uh, kitchen area over here, very well appointed for a small trailer. You've got full-size appliances, like you see the full two-door fridge freezer, not a little fridge freezer. Below that is your furnace, which does have a heat duct into the bathroom, by the way, as well as your converter box. And note the rear and side splash guards on that stovetop, plus between the stovetop cover itself, sink cover and roll-away drying rack cover and extension leaf, you've got decent prep space in a little trailer. I'm not going to tell you it's like a massive rear kitchen fifth wheel prep area, but it's better than nothing and it's better than some. Now, uh, this is a neat little thing that they did apply here is this drying rack because it can be a flat space or you can get it up out of the way and it reveals the stainless hardware that they are using here in the kitchen and you will see that repeated through the bathroom area as well. Easy reach appliance outlet below, plywood full extension drawers, and you do have a handy place just around the bend there for a wastebasket. So, like I said, despite being a small trailer, it is a very well executed, very well appointed small trailer kitchen. From here, as we work our way into the bathroom, one more construction point I want to point out that is easy to miss. And that's the fact that this isn't just a trimmed out doorway. It's a fully, like, studded out doorway. This is fully framed out so that this door always opens and closes the way it's supposed to so that it doesn't bounce open in transit and smash into things because obviously that's not going to work well. Foot flush stool and good leg room. You know, even a bigger fellow like me can fit in here. And another thing they did to make this a little bit bigger person friendly is a very generously deep shower. And I love the fact that it's got like not just a cheap shower curtain and a radius track for that uh, shower, I don't know, not door, not curtain, but thing anyway so that you've actually got decent elbow room here. Skylight for a little bonus headroom, uh, protective shower surround, and once again, nicer hardware there in the shower. Speaking of nicer hardware, if we pivot left real quick, you see that even here in the bathroom, we're still getting nicer stainless hardware, stainless sink, just like the kitchen, and that is large. You can really get your hands in there with decent space in the corner back here so that if you have, you know, your toothbrushes and all that stuff, you actually have a place to put them. You've got outlets down below. You've got an easy reach switch right there for your overhead lights. Remember I said there is a heat duct into the bathroom. It's an easily missed thing that sometimes I usually forget to talk about. Medicine cabinet is what it is. It's not the largest in the world. It's not small, but this right here, this is the unsung hero of this floor plan. This huge bonus closet back here in the bathroom area. There is a hanging rack in the top. So in addition to those dual bedside closets, you've got great additional storage space in here with more dry storage space below, perfect for things like toilet paper, body washes, etc. The first thing I wanna note out here is that the skin color that you're looking at on this Winnebago here at Haylet RV might not necessarily represent the exact Winnebago that we have here at Haylet RV. You can get these built with a number of different uh, fiberglass skin colors, which is a high irregularity in the RV business. Rockwood gives you like two colors, but Winnebago gives you like six. The Platinum upgrade that we're looking at right here has been far and away the most popular of all those. I think probably because it's neutral enough that it works with about any vehicle color, but it's still got that good upscale fancy paint, shiny shoes sort of look to it, doesn't it? You might have noticed as we walked around it, I mentioned this earlier, this is a seven foot wide camper on a tandem axle setup. This thing will tow like a dream. If you have a lower capacity vehicle, if you are nervous about towing, or frankly, you just want something that isn't gonna boss you around the road, 
this is definitely one to have on the list. Uh, these ride on a different kind of chassis. It's a Z-frame made with high strength, low alloy steel as compared to a conventional I-beam. I-beams are fine. I think this is better. And in my experience, the brands like Winnebago, Passport, there's a few others we have that ride on this chassis seem to hold up a little bit better. So I think it's kind of the same argument. If you want a good house, you start with a good foundation, don't you? We'll talk more about this big baggage door over here. But while it's closed, I want to take a moment to show you the hinge on it, how it is all enclosed so that freezing water can't spring the hinge. And you see that we do have a simple side mount solar prep plug so you can shove into that huge compartment door right there. A very nice uh, portable solar panel of you know your choosing. Now the uh, windows are all heavily tinted to keep the sun out of this thing. In addition to that, something you cannot see, we typically outfit all of our Winnebago's now with their, they call it extreme weather package. And it's a intense sounding name for a very simple but effective upgrade. What it is, is there's a, a layer of radiant uh, barrier material. Basically, it looks like... Have you ever gone to like a local football or baseball game and ordered a hot dog and there's that silvery uh, hot dog paper that keeps your hands from getting burnt? That's kind of what it looks like. While it's not a very pretty mindset, the fact is that stuff does a good job of reflecting heat. It's not insulation. Insulation is a different thing and we're happy to explain the difference between the two. But what that extreme package does is it puts a layer of that stuff up the rear wall, across the roof, down the nose, and a double layer through the belly. And what that will do is it will significantly help keep the RV cooler in the summertime by keeping the sun out of there. It'll help a little bit in the spring and the fall uh, in a cold camp sort of scenario, but it doesn't make this some sort of like, I'm going to Alaska in January Arctic camper. It's That's not what it is. Um, the slide on this is kind of cool, and then it's all above the floor, as you might have seen, uh, which allows it to be carverless, as we saw, but it's also self-adjusting. So it'll always work its way back in and out square. It'll adjust itself as required. And a really neat thing on this whole Winnebago 210 whatever family or uh, you know couples camp and series is the centralized hookups right here with separal, se separal, 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 separate cable and satellite hookups as well as black flush and outside shower. All next to your little sewer outlet station. We are prepped and ready for a Voyager backup camera system. That is something that we can assist you with here at Halid RV if you are so inclined. Also, previously optional, now standard for a season or two, is that roof access ladder up there. Because these little micro minis do have a walkable roof, which is something that we're going to see in just a few minutes. They also put the biggest awning on this they really possibly can. If uh, they extended that awning up any further, it would start to, you know, fight for space with the Murphy bed pass-through storage or the front window, and I don't think you want to sacrifice either of those things. And the fact is, for a small camper, it's got a pretty generously sized awning as it is. Uh, the awning arms do have uh, an auto rain dump feature. That's the gas strut that you see there, as well as a tilt and lock system if you just want to leave it tilted for rainy day airflow. Of course, we do have LED lighting below, outside speakers, and you do have outside TV hookups. Theoretically, there is a backer in this wall where you could mount a flat screen. But neither I nor anyone I've ever met has ever had the guts to uh, drill holes through that fancy pants fiberglass on these Winnebago's and, you know, test that. I, I just, you know, I'd rather use a portable picnic table. It's just the glass is too nice. Anyway, um, down here. Previously, the off-road package was optional on these. It has since become standard. It gets us these, uh, you know, bigger, more aggressive tires. There's an axle lift kit. So the whole thing sets up higher and gives you more ground clearance now, which is actually very, very nice when it comes to the uh, sewer hookups. And they use a wheel that looks very similar to their old wheel. It's actually pretty deceptive. You don't realize that the wheel is now bigger. What's the same as it always was, though, is the extra protection even where you're not looking like the galvanized wheel well here. Um, you know, God forbid that big, sweet-looking tire gives up the ghost from some debris on the road, because theoretically it could still happen. That extra shield right there, because if you think about what's right above this wheel well, and it's all of your kitchen plumbing and stuff, you don't want that getting ripped up. The anti-slip aluminum plank steps on a wet day like this are awesome, so that you're not slipping and sliding versus steel steps coming in and out. We've also got an anti-slam entry door, which is really important given the door's proximity to the uh, awning right there. Like you can, look at that. You can just chuck this thing and it'll still catch itself. Plus we've got the larger entry handle for, you know, safer, easier come and go. 
Now, this is one of the things Winnebago really crushed on their Murphy bed system, not just the daily use and function of it, but the ease of access to a huge under bed storage compartment. Now you've got double slam latches, double magnet holdbacks, because that is a big door. There's a gas grill quick connect down here below it, but through here, you have an expansive pass-through compartment. It's maybe not quite as tall as some trailers, but it's tall enough, and frankly, you tend to put cargo side by side instead of top to bottom, so that if you know you hit the brakes and cargo slides around, it doesn't fall and topple over. So what if it slides around a little bit? That's you know really no big deal. So we're up here on this little guy walking around the roof, because we can. You can't say that about all lightweight trailers, and especially the smaller the body the trailer gets, the higher the likelihood you cannot walk on it. So this is an important thing I want to show up here. We've got a 3 8 uh, roof deck, 16 inch on center roof trusses that are galvanized stamped steel, which allows for uh, you know nice, safe, easy wiring runs that won't have you know sharp edges rubbing against the wires long term as you bounce and jiggle bang down the road. Also. We have, other than the galvanized steel aluminum, uh, like, uh, well, not aluminum, but galvanized steel roof trusses, we have an all aluminum skeleton otherwise. Sidewalls, front, rear wall, floor, all of that is an all aluminum skeleton. There is a uh, 5 8 tongue groove plywood floor decking, which is a nicer, higher grade, superior material as well. And I don't know who's in the trailer below me rocking around. I don't think they know I'm up here right now because this thing's uh, rocking and rolling. Thankfully, I got my sea legs on today and we're going to be okay. But I am going to wrap this up just so that you don't have to watch the blooper footage of Josh the RV nerd falling off the roof of a Winnebago. Funny as that might be to some of you, it is not something I am interested in recording today. So with that... You can see that we have a little bit of everything here. Chances are, if it's on wheels, we have it. Hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. We do everything except hidden dealer fees at Halid RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.